This song is a, um, a collaboration between myself and uh, a songwriter named Patrick Valentine, who's become a dear friend of mine. Patrick uh, has written songs for uh, The Trues and uh, for uh, Big Sugar, uh, for Tim Chasen, for a bunch of artists uh, that you might hear on the radio. He's, he's won, he's got some gold and platinum records on his wall, and yet he's not a full-time songwriter. Um, uh, he does songwriting because he loves it, and uh, you know it's a it's an expensive hobby, but it's one that he's particularly good at. So I had a verse that had literally been kicking around. The first verse of this song had been kicking around for twenty years, and I always thought, like I feel like you got to hang on to everything. If you if you think it's good, you got to keep it. So I I just kept it around, and then and Patrick and I started writing some songs and. Uh, I noticed that he was really good at taking stuff that I felt had no life left in it, maybe because I started writing it, and it, but it wasn't inspiring me to finish it. But he could take that and he would turn it into something new and something fresh. And this is a huge luxury for a songwriter like me who gets stuck sometimes. I get stuck a lot, actually. So I write half a song or a third of a song or three quarters of a song and I don't finish it because I'm just like, I don't know where it's going to go now. And you know this myth about people who write songs in uh, in in the time it takes to sing them. You know, like they took me five minutes. You know, well it's a four minute song. Yeah, I had to tune. You know, it, it it's a myth largely. It's not fully a myth because that's happened to me for sure. But uh, I would say, don't buy don't believe everything you read. Uh, Songwriters sometimes labor over things for years. Leonard Cohen labored over his songs for decades. Uh, and I think his songwriting speaks for itself. Um, the magic songs are the ones that come really fast, but they don't, they don't happen all the time, unfortunately. Anyway, Patrick's been a lifesaver for me. And uh, this song, um, I wasn't even sure what it was about when I wrote the first verse, and, and I had another verse as well that he sort of hammered into shape. But it, he came up with the tagline, the hook line, which is the title. Um, baby, what did you come here for? Because I had told them a story about, about visiting an old girlfriend and, and it went badly. Um, I sort of thought, what the hell am I, what am I doing here? And, but she had sort of initiated the meeting and I think she may have thought the same thing. So the song isn't directed at her. And it's not directed at me, but it's maybe at both of us. Like, what are we here for? Why, why are we doing this? Because um, clearly things were over, but maybe we didn't think that when we agreed to meet each other. Anyway, that's kind of what the song's about. This is uh, my Guild JF30. It's a, it's a jumbo guitar, as you can see. Uh, it means it's got a big body. Um, I bought it in 1989, and at first I didn't have a good case for it, just the one that came with it. But um, I found myself flying to gigs, and I felt the guitar wasn't safe, so I had to go get a case for it. Because of the shape of the body, the case was super expensive, and I spent a whole lot of money getting this case from the Kelton Case Company. It's, it's like uh, they're, they're so solid, you could drop it from a moving train. I don't know why I said that. It would probably not break. But um, uh, it's also super heavy. And I chose one, because I was playing folk festivals at the time, I chose one in a bright yellow color because I wanted to make it stand out. When you play folk festivals, your guitars are often piled up with a bunch of other people's guitars. And I wanted mine to stand out so I could say to the person at the instrument locker, um, yeah, mine's the yellow one. And then they'd be able to go get it and so forth. The problem now is I have this bright yellow, super heavy, big guitar case that's worth a lot of money sitting in my basement because I don't fly to gigs so much anymore. And um, I don't really know what to do with it. So I think, I think what I got to do is start booking some more flying dates somewhere. That'll, that'll probably justify that. So I did this gig where um, a friend of mine had actually booked Leonard Cohen to play at a, at a, a street festival on Bay Street um, Leonard Cohen had a, had a book of poetry coming out. It was his first book in, I don't know, 3,000 years or something. And so it was a big deal. And he was going to play. Uh, Ron Sexsmith was going to play. And Stephen Page from Bare Naked Ladies was going to play. And Leonard Cohen himself was going to play. And uh, my friend who had 
put this together, he was going to play and he needed a good acoustic guitar. And this is a good acoustic guitar. This is this sounds great plugged in as well. Um, but the cool thing was, when I met Leonard Cohen, all he could talk about was the yellow case because he'd never seen anything like that. And we didn't talk for very long. It was just a very brief brush, you know. But he said, boy, that, that case, that's really bright. That's a bright yellow. <laughs> that's That's something. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to ask about like one of his songs, you know, how did you write Hallelujah or, or whatever, but I couldn't because all he was talking about was my case. This song has an intro um, that's really just a G chord. It's in the key of G. And uh, there are a few tricky chords here and there, but not nothing too special. It's mostly... G, C, and D, the one, and the four, and the five. You may have heard of those chords. Uh, otherwise known as the blues progression, but I'm not playing any blues here. But the intro is based around a G chord. But I do this. I add one finger on this string, on the second string. And it does what, it's it's called a suspension. And it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a suspended four, meaning it's the fourth note in the scale, which is a C. But I take it on and off. And what it does, it sort of builds tension and, and builds uh, interest. Um, Rolling Stone songs are almost all based on suspended chords. Suspended and then released chords. Like, um, you know, Start Me Up. Uh, that's a suspension. That's the open, that's the D chord. That's a D played at the uh, seventh fret. Um, there's a, like, you know, a Brown Sugar. Uh, um, there is, anyway, I'm not going to play their songs. They, the point is that Rolling Stones songs are based around the suspension and the release, and that's what this is. Not that I was thinking of the Rolling Stones, because it's a pretty common thing in, in music. That's the suspension. The suspension has the effect of not feeling finished. Um, if you ended a song on the suspension... Uh, Thank you, good night. You know, if that was the end of the song... Um, it feels sort of unfinished. It feels like like it's hanging in the air, and that's a good effect. Like if you're trying to, uh, you know, feel a little slightly unsettled, it's a it's a good thing. But it adds interest anyway. So enough talk. A little more rock. This is the intro to the song. My usual excuses are usually enough. But tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff. So what that is, is G, sus. That's what we call it, the sus, suspension. Suspended chord. My usual excuses are usually... So what that is, is the four chord in the key of G, which is C, but it's minor, right? That's a C chord, but it's a C minor chord. So it's a bar chord. And I could have done a major, I think. My usual excuses are usually enough. And that'd be okay, but it just wasn't as interesting to me. So I want to do a minor. You'll hear that minor four thing a lot in Beatles songs. Um, and... Uh, I didn't do it for that reason, but I just felt it was more interesting. So I'm going to keep going. My usual excuses are usually enough, but tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger. That's an A minor on the open fret. Made of stronger stuff, which is D. I'm going to revamp. I mean, or rather, I'm going to review now. My usual excuses are usually enough. But tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff. Now it's going to get a little tricky. If you ask me, that's a G chord, but then here, watch this, putting my one finger on the D string at the first fret. If you ask me for my story, then declare it all a bore. Now that movement you hear that in, in pop songs. It's kind of a classic kind of thing. Usually pop songs from the 60s. Uh, I've used it one other time in one of my songs. It just builds tension. What it does is you're playing a, a regular G chord, then you're raising the D to an E flat, and then you're going to the second fret, making it an E. And 
and then you're making it go to a seven a G7 but the seven down in the bottom so it's a little tricky but I swear if you learn to move your fingers around like that it's it's very beneficial because you can use it in different ways my uh, 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 my usual excuses are usually enough but tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff if you ask me for my story then declare it all a bore C baby what did you do here for G. It's simple after that. Okay, so that's one verse from the top. I'm going to sing it through because there's two verses together before we get to a new part. I'm going to do it slowly so you can hopefully play along. It's a little tricky, but again, every one of these things is like a building block towards other songs. Even if you hate this song. You learn how to play these song, these chord shapes and these movements. You can use them in lots of other things. My usual excuses are usually enough. Sorry, I said I was going to play it slowly. Here I go, slowly. My usual excuses are usually enough. But tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff. If you ask me for my story, then declare it all a bore. Baby, what did you come here for? Sus. Subtext kind of baffles me. What is it that you mean? Tell your truth directly, please, and free of mystery. I hate to play, oh, I'm sick and tired of asking, I won't beg, but I'll implore, baby, what did you come here for? Now here's the B part. This song doesn't have a chorus. Lots of songs don't have choruses, and I call these A-A-B-A -A -A songs. Yesterday by the Beatles is an A-A-B-A song. Song. It doesn't have a chorus, but the last line of every verse is kind of like the chorus. I'm going to come out of the verse, um, uh, this rising thing, I call it. Baby, what did you come here for? Baby, what did you, you come here for? To sit me down and tell me how your heart got torn. Baby, what did you come here for? Okay, so I'm going to explain up to there. What that is, is the B part starts on a C. Baby, what did you come here for? To sit me down and tell me how your heart got torn. And that's a B minor. You'll notice it's the same shape as the C minor. But I moved it down a fret. B minor. So, baby, what did you come here for? To sit me down and tell me how your heart got torn. And it goes back to the C. Baby, what did you come here for? Now, all that is is a walk down, I call it, to an A minor. So, but you don't have to do that. Baby, baby, what did you come here for? A minor. Uh, did you expect that we'd add up? There's a D. But here's a little tricky thing. I'm sorry, I can't help these tricky things. They're in my songs. I can't help it. <laughs> did you expect that we'd add up? Like two and three makes four. That's a D with a descending bass, so you're going. You may recognize that from lots of songs. Um, Do you expect that we'd add up? Like two and three makes four. Your expectations, that's a G, ain't my business. I won't change for you no more. That's a G to a C minor back to a G. So baby, what did you come here for? G, D, G. I'm gonna do that whole B part again. Baby, what did you come here for? To sit me down and tell me how your heart got torn. Baby, what did you come here for? Were you expecting we'd add up like two and three? I won't change for you no more So baby, what did 
did you come here for? That's the whole B part. And that's the sus. After the B part comes another A part, which is a verse. Same chords as before. I've wrestled tin horn tyrants, drawing lines across the sand, and bettered backroom bullies, shaking babies, kissing hands. Well, I hate to play the victim after winning every war, but baby, what did you come here for? Guess what's coming up? It's the B part. Baby, what did you come here for? To sit me down and tell me how your heart got torn. That's C to B minor. Baby, what did you come here for? Were you, X A minor, were you expecting we'd add up like two and three makes four? Your expectations ain't my business. I won't change for you no more. So what did you come here for? And that's it. That's the whole song. It's a lot on the one hand. On the other hand, these are tools in your toolbox. Whether you're a songwriter or a guitar player, uh, they're just good things. Like that descending D. You learn that and you can play Being thrown up in Never knew the words. Uh, Handle with care by Traveling Wilburys, right? But you can also play my song. <laughs> um, but that that also, if you wanted to play, there's a, there's a lot of songs that do this, right? So if you learn that, you can play These Arms of Mine by Otis Redding, for example, right? Um, the minor thing that gets you into Beetle Land if you want the minor four. But also, if you learn that shape and you get your fingers around it and you can do it reliably up and down the neck, you can do, you can move it up and down the neck and you can suddenly, you can be playing like, you know, a, a C sharp minor, you know, so when you're looking at, at a songbook and you see that shape, it's like, you, you, yeah, I can do that, no problem. So, you know, my song may be a gateway drug, I don't know, but um, I think it's worth pursuing to to uh, learn these shapes and these uh, and these movement chord movement things my usual excuses are usually enough but tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff if you ask me for my story, then declare it all a bore. Baby, what did you come here for? Subtext kind of baffles me. What is it that you mean? Tell your truth directly, please, and free of mystery. I'm sick and tired of asking. I won't beg, but I'll implore. Baby, what did you come here for? I won't change for you no more So baby, what did you come here for? I've wrestled tin horn tyrants Drawing lines across the sand And bettered backroom bullies Shaking babies, kissing hands I hate to play the victim After winning every war But baby, what did you come here for? I won't change for you no more So baby, what did you come here for? My 
usual excuses are usually enough But tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff If you ask me for my story, then declare it all a bore Well, really, baby, what did you come here for? That's an E minor to mention those extra chords at the end. There's an E minor, then there's an F, and then it goes back to the G and the G sus, and then it ends, and people applaud, and magic ensues, and are usually enough but tonight my biggest critic is made of stronger stuff if you ask me for my story